When it comes to open world fantasy RPG, it's hard to make a name for itself. With big titles dominating the genre for years, being king is no small feat. Yet, here we are. After the assassins, here comes the wild hunt. I'm Louis, and this is The Witcher 3. Set in a fictional yet brutal medieval era, the game puts you in the skin of Geralt, a precise and sharp professional called a witcher. Trained from an early age and forged under strict training, you are a deadly instrument that works for money and beliefs. The main protagonist is easy to like with color talents and clever quotes. He is there by few and hated by many. Tell you what, give you a chance to earn something. Anything you take off me, you get to keep. City Projects really knew what they were doing, and as a player, you will be totally immersed into the Witcher's world. From the poor peasant, the ravages of the war, the brave and the fools, the game takes no exclusion of subjects. It's a mature game for a mature audience. It can be violent and sexual. It certainly had a more realistic tone to it. The line between good and evil is always blurred, and the decisions you take can have an effect hours later in the game. Let's just say that sometimes, it's better to suck it up before making a mistake. The characters you meet are very interesting and varied. It's a bit disappointing that you can't talk to everybody, but the ones which you can are interesting. I have never found myself skipped throughout the dialogue, even if it was unnecessary to complete a quest. The dialogues are simply well written and will keep you hooked. All in all, be prepared to put your social interactions to a treat. It's strangely very human and it's very well delivered. At this point, doubt I'll ever marry. You keep the coin from Mandy, her wedding. Raise a toast to my health then. Thank you, Master Witcher. Them's warm words, you've a good heart. But I can't let you go empty handed. Take this at least. Good luck. The game offers a lot of features. The map is massive, yet accessible. You won't feel overwhelmed and completing it is a demanding task. Geralt has many tools to his disposal. Potions, swords, crossbows, bombs, armor and magic will help you slay your enemies and earn your coins. All can be crafted and improved via various ways. It can be a bit too much at first as the training is minimal to say the least. After a few hours though, you will get more comfortable with the things you want to loot and discard for future crafting and brewing. You're also accompanying with your horse called Roach. Its design isn't without flaws, but it's certainly a good way to travel efficiently and add new mechanics to the game. The combat is well made with different types of attacks and parry available to you. You have to be focused and careful as you can't take that many hits. Large packs are to be avoided as you will be overwhelmed quickly. The animation are great, but it's not as fast and responsive as Dark Souls. It has to be said that there is a little learning curve. It's not an easy game to start with, there are only a few ways to regain back your health. I would still advise to play the game on hard, as you will put more emphasis on your strategy and really use all the features available to you to overcome the challenges. There is the new addition of to the series, Gwent, a card game. Really? Yep. Weirdly, I got addicted to it and adding new cards to my deck and changing my strategy really puts a little course of fun. It can bring up new twists to questing and it's a fun little addition. Quests are the main purpose here. There are a lot of various events going on in the world of the Witcher. Completing them is always interesting to say the least. You're never asked to go on boring excavation or collecting mushrooms for hours. They are well proportioned and you always can investigate more to have a more specific views on the task to come. Sometimes the truth is only revealed at the very end and it makes the overall system well designed to keep you hooked. I have to admit that there is some faulty quests. Sometimes the NPC would react in a way that it wasn't supposed to be, and I failed a few quests after a few seconds of starting it. It's annoying, but only occur a few times. It is essential that you get out of the main role, because half of the game content is you discovering situations and events and reacting according to them. 
Actually, I see a few monsters. Where? Dreddy, damn it, dumber than a hunk of lard you are. He means us. We're common folk. You're the mutant. The poxy freak. Get him, lads! By now, you probably can see how gorgeous The Witcher 3 is. The animation are smooth and realistic, the lightning effects are breathtaking and the textures are well detailed. The environment is lush and really puts you in a pre-modern tone. Perhaps its best aspects is its design. The muddy roads, the dirty people, the architectures, the various effects, the armors and monsters really set an immersion that feels unique and colored that only The Witcher seems to be able to pull off. Unfortunately, it has to be said that there are some graphical infidelity. Popping models, blank textures can be annoying, but it's nowhere green breaking. It's good to know that CD Projekt are still releasing patches to fix it all. The sound design is beautiful. From the voice acting, the various environment sounds, the music, be ready to put your sound to the max and really be immersed into its beautiful notes. Make yourself a treat because it's a color palette that will make your ears happy. I'm giving this game a 9.4 out of 10. In the end, The Witcher 3 isn't a perfect game, but it really might be one of the greatest. So prepare your potions, sharpen your swords and ready yours, because the Wild Hunt is here and you have a duty to play it.